Hey there, YouTubers. Welcome back. This is Daniel Strong with another exciting episode of Excel VBA is Fun. Today we're going to talk about the almighty list box. So from the home, from the developer tab here, we're going to click on Insert, and we're going to go to the ActiveX controls, specifically the list box ActiveX control. What is a list box? A list box is... Rather than a drop-down menu that collapses every time you click away from it, it is always the same size, pretty much, um, and it is a way of filling. Um, it fills up with whatever you pre predetermined. Today, we're going to show you one method of filling in this list box. And if I click in design mode and you click on here, you see this one is called list box one. We can rename it right here. We're not going to just yet. First, we have, you see, we have a little database here, and it is one, two, three, four, six, seven columns. So I'm going to control shift down, and we're going to give this table a name. We'll call it my DB, my database. Hit enter, and now that is named that. We're going to show you the first way, the easy way, but not so much custom way to fill a list box. So I'm going to right click on my list box here, which doesn't look like much now. Go to properties. And then the list fill range, we're going to say my DB. That's the name that we gave that table. Now, as you see, I hit enter. Uh, when I hit enter, it only gives me the the data from the first column. Why? Because the column count is one. Now, all we have to do is change that to seven because we want it to take all seven columns into account. And you can see immediately. In fact, I'll even, I'm going to shove this in the way of the database because these ActiveX controls are movable. You can put them wherever you want. So you can see as you stretch it a little bit, you can see one, two, three, four, all seven columns. Now, you notice that uh, column heads is false. You could make that true, um, and it does that for you. That's... It, it, this is the only way that the column heads actually are useful. Uh, if you're filling them custom, it, it does detract a little bit from, from the columns. You can also customize the column widths, uh, which is right here. Let me just pull this over here so get a good zoom here. Column widths is, you can customize that, but as you start customizing that, if you start, you're going to have to finish. Meaning, if you say that the first column you want to be 50, then you're going to need to say that the second column is going to be 30, and so on, all the way to the last one, or they may get a little confused. Let's see what that does as I click away to finalize that. So we can see right off the bat that 50 is just not big enough for our first column. So we'll go back here. And you see that it kind of automatically rounds up a little bit. Took my 50 and put it as 49.95 PT, but whatever. We'll just say, let's try, um, let's try 100. I'm going to hit enter. Okay, 100 looks like it's pretty good. Maybe even overkill for a date. 75. That looks pretty good. So if you do that, I mean, they were spaced out okay without this. If you just want to start from scratch, you can hit delete. And they were actually pretty well set anyways, but... So I'll take us out of design mode, and you can see that uh, our list there is pretty pretty complete here. Going back to the design mode, I'm going to show you a few more things about the list box. Um, in our future videos, we're going to show you how to fill the list box with custom items and things you can do, like when you click on one or more, um, or double click, that would run an event or whatever. What else? Um... We also want to note that you can change the background color or the border color and the font color using the four color here. The font type here. Um, okay. Uh, and just keep in mind that the list fill range is the easy but not so customizable way. But you could also say um, A2 through uh, G50 and hit enter, and that would fill uh, fill your list box accordingly. You don't have to use a named range. But if you want to keep it dynamic, if you have a dynamic named range, I would uh, say use that, my database. All right, uh, list style, you got plain or option. That means, really it doesn't mean anything except for these little option 
doohickeys right here instead of the standard plane locked okay that's true right now if we unlocked it I imagine that even in a protected sheet people could click on that and do things with that match entry first letter this has to do with when you're typing letters how it'll scroll down to that entry um, you can play around with that mouse pointer you can change the mouse pointer so that's interesting multi select uh, by default these are single select if you change it to multi um, then you can actually select multiple options. And then the only way to deselect them is by clicking on them again. Notice I'm not having to hold the control button down to select multiple options. Um, I, and if I hold shift down, it does not select everything. You have to do them one at a time. You can do multiple select that way. Um, placement. Hmm. I have not messed with that. Somebody messaged me. Print object, I believe that has to do with whether it will print or if it will not print out the printer. Shadow is false. So that's what it looks like when it's true. Special effects, uh, sunken. And there's different one etched. That's just how they appear. Text. Let's see. Hmm, I'm not going to mess with that right now. Text align left, center or right alignment. And then the top, of course... Uh, in conjunction with your uh, left and possibly is there a height here there is a height so you can control uh, where they are so if the top was 100 it would bring that down or up accordingly so anyway um, uh, visible and is true or false if you set it to false it would not be visible it's a little trickier to bring back than in a user form. We'll do more on this very soon. Thank you so much for watching this list box video.